I'm back at the first 3D printed house in Dallas. Remember, this is one of two. It's come a long way since we were here last. We're gonna take a look through the inside and see how it is now that it's almost ready for the new renters to move in. My robot builds completed this unit and they have a couple new projects coming up which I'll be eager to feature in the future. The roof looks great. Besides that, the exterior hasn't really changed too much. Pay close attention to some of the details and quality and notice how it improves from their first print to their second print. This is very common. Like with most new things, there's a learning curve as people experiment with something from the first time and eventually develop a mastery for it. Here's a closer look of some 4K drone footage flying around the exterior of the home. This is the first home they printed. Later in the video, we'll get to the second home and you'll be able to compare the layer quality. For a first home print, this is quite good. The second home they did is actually much better. It's been a while since I've had the drone flying. It was having some issues that I finally resolved. It'll be good to have that addition to the channel and the perspective it gives, especially the top-down view of the different roof systems people choose to put on their 3D printed houses. I use a Mavic Mini 2, which is great because it's under 250 grams. Check it out for yourself at the affiliate link in the description. The house was brand new and was super clean, so I let my dog run around outside while I shot the footage of the interior. I also took a virtual 360 scan, which will be up on the virtual village of 3D printed houses. I'd really like to be able to host more scans at once on the virtual village, but we don't have enough members to cover the cost of the next tier yet, so sign up in the link below. This space looks great. They were very creative with the floor, and the walls add a lot of character to the building. Looking closely at this wall, you can see where they purposely smoothed some of these sections out, and other places they left it much more raw. They were experimenting with this print. This actually looks super clean and feels really nice. The walls don't really draw your attention in a negative way. If you look from a distance, it looks totally flat. It's not really until you get much closer that you start to see some of the curvatures that give it its unique qualities. Totally one of a kind. This is the laundry room of the house, kind of right off the kitchen. And it shows where they were able to cut right into the printed walls for uh, water and electrical, uh, basically all the different types of holes you'll need. And it wasn't uh, impossible with the printed walls. People always ask early on, how do you do the electrical? How do you do the plumbing? Or even how do you hang things on the wall? The answer is pretty simple and you mostly look to concrete masonry units or cinder blocks and that's always an option. Anything that would apply to cinder blocks could be applied to a printed concrete wall. Although the higher PSI might mean you require a higher torque drill for your concrete screws. Pay close attention to the two vertical walls at the kitchen counter. This house you can see there's a bit of variance and the line isn't perfectly straight up and down. In the second house, there's a major improvement to this. It's interesting because the wall quality at the end of the day is kind of just a nuanced looks thing. They're both the same square footage, they have the same rooms, the same amenities. Living in the two houses would be almost the same. At the end of the day, aesthetics are important, but in construction, it's all about the bottom line. It's more cost effective to leave the printed layers raw. If you do need to smooth finish them, it will be much cheaper to get a smooth finish if they're flat walls because then you have to use less material to make it all uniform rather than something with an inch in or out that will require an extra inch of material in those areas to compensate for the dips in the wall. This traditional style house is two bathroom and three bedroom. It's got this shared bathroom. The bedrooms aren't huge, but with the finishings in gray and white, it looks really nice. And they get that like splatter finish on the floor, which is really cool. Uh, concrete floor. If it had some carpet, the audio would probably be a little bit less echoey, but it looks really nice. Even just drapes on the windows will improve the audio a little bit. But the bedrooms are nice, and this is the master with its own bathroom. They left the printed walls heavily exposed. And whether you like it or not, it makes a lot of sense from a cost perspective. Most people are interested in automated construction because of the potential cost implications of replacing human labor with technology. 
if you add a bunch of human labor finishes to the construction project, then you're not realizing the full benefit of automation on your project. People who work on job sites can instantly recognize all the human labor that was required to complete this structure here. The electrical, plumbing, the slab, these things aren't even seen from this perspective, but we're looking at the windows, the roof, and things like painting, appliances from the interior. All of this required human effort, so the 3D printing isn't cutting into the labor tremendously at this stage. Even though the tech is early, there are still some notable advantages that are available right now from these printers and this technology, mostly because the permitting requires the structural integrity of the building be based on reinforced vertical columns. This means the strength of the printed concrete exterior and interior wall is completely ignored in their structural calculations. To put it simply, these homes are way overbuilt and much stronger than they need to be. Most likely the strongest home on the block by far. I can't wait to see how they hold up over 10 years, 20 years. Now we're at the second house printed by My Robot Builds. Before we take a look inside, I want to take a second to tell you about Ventures Equipment, my channel sponsor and the best solution for silo mixer pump systems for printed concrete. They're willing to work with your team to make their silo mixer pump work with your system and up to 3 8 aggregate mixes. Contact Ventures Equipment at the link in the description, VenturesEQ.com for more information on how they can help you. The only difference between this house and the first house they printed is an extra half a foot. It's nine feet tall instead of eight and a half and it really makes a big difference, making the space more open and the layer quality is much better on this second print compared to their first. I'm not saying the layers are perfect, but if you look at the quality that you're getting here, it's very similar to the quality as you move up the wall. And this consistency is a good thing. The floor of this unit has a slightly different style. I think I like the other one better, but it's a very qualitative thing. Who's to say which splatter is more artful? I noticed the biggest difference in this wall and that wall. This house, features a much more straight wall as opposed to the first house which was kind of wonky. I'm sure the third house by My Robot Builds will be even better so make sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next video I do with this awesome startup. Now for the drone fly around of the second unit. You can instantly tell the layers are far more uniform. When you're printing at different layer heights the mixer pump system has to pump at variable strengths because at a higher height, it has to push the heavy concrete up much further distance. This is the issue that often leads to inconsistencies in a novice print, but you can see that in this second home, My Robot Builds has addressed these inconsistency issues. And although their lines are not perfectly smooth, they never are, the top and bottom is similar and there aren't any days where they evidently had tons of splatter or fill-in spots. I can't wait until someone makes an AI drone capable enough to get 4K footage of the house while I'm walking through and filming the YouTube video. That'll be an awesome feature. I also plan on one day investing in one of those quadruped robots and strapping a camera to it so that it can be my camera guy instead of having to place my tripod everywhere. To make it fun, Let's make it a little challenge. If I get to 100,000 subscribers, I'll buy one of those Boston Dynamics robot dogs. Now let's take a look inside this second 3D printed home that's almost the same as the first but with much better layer quality and an extra half a foot on the ceilings that makes it a much more open, expansive space. You can easily tell from the door frames and the corners of the walls how much straighter this print was and how much more precise they were able to be. They also messed with the layers much less than they did with the first print. There were many sections where they tried to smooth out parts of the first print and didn't keep a continuous strategy throughout the entire thing as experimentation often goes. But with this second house, they maintained the same strategy from the first layer to the last. My Robot Builds is busy with new projects this month which I'll be covering on my channel, so make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss a beat.